Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2015. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We'll go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, with my co-host Dave Vellante. We're here with Paul Miller, uh, marketing at the, with the, uh, which group is it that you Converged are? Converged Data Center Con Infrastructure. Converged Data Center, um, and huge announcement. I mean, first of all, Converged Data Center, also called Software Defined Data Center and other buzzwords, <laughs> is at the center point of the conversation. Great to see you again. Welcome great. to theCUBE. Yeah, great, great to talk to you guys. Yeah, we've had a big event here. We've got announcements across what we're trying to do to move the digital enterprise forward with things we're doing today with new products, new partnerships, and then a vision for the future. So, a lot of cool things that customers can work today and then also build their foundation for the next generation infrastructure on. So DevOps is hot, right? So DevOps world is about composing apps in real time, for real time, with APIs, notifications, and having an infrastructure to support it. And, and that is really the, the theme of the project. So talk about the announcement that you guys have, and then we'll dig into kind of what does it mean, and how does it, right. how does it fit into the building blocks of HP? Okay, yeah, so we're announcing, uh, we're calling Project Synergy. It's a multi-year initiative to build the next generation infrastructure we're calling Composable. And what Composable Infrastructure is all about, it's an evolution of Converged, where Converged was all about putting pieces together to make them simpler to run. Composable is all about the application layer and enabling fast time to DevOps, quick, quick ability to deliver applications. You know, in the traditional world, applications get refreshed in package applications like ERP two or three times a year, right? Customers have very set processes for, for deploying them. For the new cloud apps, cloud native apps and mobile apps, people want to put applications out there, test them, see how the market reacts to them, then go through another cycle. You have to do that. That's to iteration, that's the classic iteration. iterate till you get to production. And composed infrastructure is all about building a platform that's not only going to optimize your traditional apps, but enable this faster time to DevOps, quicker deployment of, of resources out to the marketplace, and giving customers the right resources at the right time for their application. So it's converged infrastructure with a software layer on top of that that has sort of personalities to different workloads. Yeah, so what we're right? doing is it's a, it's a, it's a three-tiered structure. We're moving to uh, enabling fluid pools of resources and the ability to aggregate and disaggregate them as the application needs. So actually compose the right infrastructure at the right time. In the middle layer is the software intelligence and at the top layer is a composable API. Our RESTful API, it's unified across server storage and networking. And one of the big announcements we've made is not only the opening of that API, we call it the composable API, composable infrastructure API, but a partner program around that to enable some of the new partners who are getting the DevOps world and customers are working with to be able to compose that infrastructure easily through a single line of code. So partners like Chef, Ansible, Docker, our own HP software team, as well as VMware, writing to this API to enable customers to quickly deploy and stand up infrastructure around that application. So prog programmatic provisioning. Correct. Uh, and then a layer of software intelligence that is dynamic, that if something changes, it will... The long-term vision, dynamic that it changes and helps you adjust, so that if you do a cloud native app, you deploy, it, it needs more resources, you deploy just the resources they need, whether it be you know, hyper-converged storage, whether it be com compute, et cetera. So you're essentially replicating that the facile nature of the public cloud and the elasticity of that public cloud on-premises or in a hybrid situation. Absolutely, so like customers go today, one of the things they like is to go to a simple command line and ask for resources or have their application ask for resources. That's what we want to enable, that's what the vision is all about. And one of the things you'll see us actually do is work with Chef when we stood up a demonstration where Chef recipes can, can you know, take the application and then through a single line of code ask for the resources they need and simply, they, and these are all based on one views are where we're announcing these uh, APIs through, serves up the resources that Chef needs. So we're enabling customers to stand up 
a bare metal cloud using a chef recipe, just getting the resources they need, standing up applications that would, and delivering the payload of a container through Docker, enabling faster DevOps through Ansible, and traditional VMware and virtualization deployments. So Paul, I got to ask you about the state of the market. So, I mean, basically it's like, okay, open source has been a big driver of yep. the DevOps. OpenStack, we talked about that earlier. And then the customers have legacy stuff. Yep. So, okay, here's the, here's the paranoia for the customer, or challenge, hence opportunity. Man, I love that open source stuff, but I'm really nervous. It's not big, and uh, DevOps is that, will I scare my existing guys? I, you know, I need to hire more people, but I love it. Get better, faster, run harder. But then I got a legacy environment. So, how, did, how does this fit into the bridge between the two? And right. how do they connect together? Right, so the idea of, of the composable infrastructure is actually to provide that bridge, to provide a set of tools that customers are familiar with, i.e. HP OneView, and processes that they're familiar with, and then bridge into some of the new world applications. So enabling customers to use the, the API to address the traditional ways they deploy infrastructure, and then working with the, the, the partners I mentioned, plus that'll integrate up into the orchestration layers that are provided by OpenStack to enable this. So we hope we provide a platform, one, one platform that enables both, so that customers aren't standing up different platforms, one for cloud native apps and one for their traditional apps. So they apps. start in a very risk-free environment. Exactly. And then bring in, and with, through the API, that's where the, the puppet chef thing is. Yeah, and we see this as not, you know, so customers are going to flip the switch tomorrow, right? It's a transition. So the first phase of the transition actually started with convergence, infrastructure automation, and now this continuous uh, service delivery is the next phase of that transition. So I want to come back and talk about this whole, we heard Meg's keynote, the idea yeah. economy. We talk about the digital economy all the time. Um, it's real, and I like the idea economy. It's different than the digital yeah. economy. I said, I tweeted, HP's got a lead, it's not going to follow, so it's yeah. going to come up with some new terms, but the ideas are sort of the mainspring of the digital economy. So you put in this infrastructure, this composable infrastructure, you know, the extension of, uh, evolution of Converge. It's simplification, it's eliminating some of that heavy lifting yep. that I've had to do. It's enabling organizations then to go up the value chain. Correct. Okay, so, so are we moving the needle yet? How far are we moving that needle and how far can we move it in the digital economy? So, so we're just scratching the surface, quite frankly. The, 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 the synergy of the project is a multi-year initiative. Our vision around Composable is a multi-year. But we're going to, through the launch of the API, enable customers to start that journey and to get true value out of that through these That's resources phase we're one. getting. That's phase one. What does phase one mean? I mean, be specific. What is so it? phase so one. So you're selling a product out there, customers can use it. So phase one is using uh, the current converged infrastructure, our blade systems, our converged systems, HP OneView, married with these partners that we're going to market with and exposing the uh, SDK, a solution developer yeah. kit, and the API for customers to go These actually are parties that program. are already out there, like Chef and Puppet, yep. on the configuration management side, containers, Docker, et cetera. Correct. Um, I got to ask you about the, the news around this um, Arista thing. Yeah. I mean, it was a Business Insider article. <laughs> I love the headlines of Business Insider. I got to give props to those guys. Very New York Post-like. It's like, but you know, it's link bait, but it gets, it gets people fired up to get attention to it. Mention Cisco. The Cisco haters team up. I mean, obviously, HP and Arista. Okay. What does that mean? I, I really didn't get the article, what they were getting at, but what, is there a significant substance? Is it a technology deal? Is right. It marketing, go to market? Right, when I think about what we're doing, it's all about being open and projecting openness. Customers don't want lock-in. They want solutions and converged systems. The value of standing up infrastructure faster, mm -hmm. getting faster time to value, but they want open choice. Arista brings unique technologies in their high bandwidth, low latency uh, architecture that's really great for moving large VDI workloads around like very intense graphics, for doing work with big data. So we're enabling customers' choice between whether they want to use HP networking, Cisco, so what's or the, what's Arista. So what's the Arista specific news? So the Arista specific news is we're partnering to develop a converged infrastructure solution 
that's going to be delivered through the channel. So customers uh, will be able to go to the channel partner and get a fully tested, fully integrated, one-stop shop system that has HP Blades, HP 3PAR, and the Arista switch in, embedded within it. So it, we're really making it much easier for customers to consume That's a real testimonial. And go after Arista's this. got a great platform. And they got some pretty high-end customers too. Yeah, like absolutely. HP. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really good solution space for us where HP Networking and, and Arista are really uh, collaborative in that space. So we think we've got a really good solution that customers are going to be able to see faster time to value okay. from this totally integrated system. I wonder if we could come back to Synergy for a second. Project okay. Synergy. So, yeah. so you, you talk about multi-year initiative. Um, so that says roadmap, and yep. it says to me investment, and I think it implies organizational uh, as well. Right. Can we like double click on that a little bit? Okay, so let's start with the organization. So the Converge Data Center Infrastructure Team was formed about four months ago, and part of that was to drive this initiative. It was to bring together the critical mass of our Blade organization, our Converge Systems organization, HP OneView. So that's the nucleus. Rick Lewis leads that organization. On top of that, we're working with our, 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 our storage organization to bring in technologies such as hyper-converged, as well as being able to take and manage both block, file, and, uh, and, and traditional SAN all as one. We're working with HP Networking and others around software-defined networking, pulling that into it, as well as HP Labs, and you'll see so you'll see a lot more of that story being told around HP Labs and what we're our, our work around the application platform and composable applications that'll sit on top of the the, the uh, composable infrastructure. So I I, I got to say the yeah. word microservices. Is that what we're talking about? At we're that, talking that about microservices. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So that's it's one of the. Soa lives. Yeah, it, it lives. <laughs> <laughs> microservices lives. That's one of the uh, one of the pieces of the architecture. So what you'll see is first delivering these APIs that start the journey. Next phase is all about really delivering on infrastructure as code. Then you'll start to see us deliver out the, the rest of the architecture that brings in integration of analytics, integration of an end to end platform, and then that all leads to you know, the machine at the end goal. So we are looking at a multi-year initiative that when you get to the machine, that's when you can truly carve up and get the, the granularity. The machine being and the big HP. The HP and, and vision and around machine. the machine. And you got applications yeah. that can run on it. That, exactly. That's a key you know, vision that you guys have put forth. Absolutely. Like said, this is the good, this is the really great part. This is the really we great part. We actually have applications <laughs> to run on this. So it's not just some science. Well, you got some project. time, and we, we saw at OpenStack, the feedback was all the container rage with Docker is watered down a little bit now because there's just not enough native apps out there uh, in terms of native cloud apps. There are some, but not a lot. Right. There are also legacy apps that repurpose. So containers are kind of you know, waiting in the wings. So break down this whole containerization, and then where does that fit in? Because you have an interesting balance here. You can, you can be an arbiter of legacy to new in an excellent, elegant way with containers and orchestration. And you get the configuration, configuration management chef and puppet down there, but like now this whole world's exploding around native apps. That seems to be a wheelhouse for you guys. Yeah, yeah, and, and quite frankly, we're not trying to, to, to push people to containers or have that as our only strategy. Whether you want to go to containers or go right to bare metal, it's going to be the application and the application writer's choice. But it does enable you to de have the portability that customers are looking for in being able to have, you know, and, you, and we're not going there quite yet in the multi-broker, but that's... Well, that's phase a, one is just get started, get the get API started. out there. So you, you laid out the roadmap. Um, talk about the this verified workload specific reference architecture. What does that mean? Okay. I mean, I heard that kicked around. Yeah. So what that really is, is that, and we're doing this with Arista, is their engineers, our engineers, testing it, testing the workloads, testing the use cases, making sure that, you know, that when a customer has an issue, there's an engineering team standing behind it that has said, yes, I've tested it and I've, I've worked out through all the issues or if I find another issue, I'm going to help you, Mr. Customer, to resolve any issues. On workloads. On workloads. Okay. So, you know, whether it's, you know, let's say it's a, on Arista, a good example would be, a virtualization, a VDI solution, or you know, uh, you know some of the new link stuff. Heavy, heavy network. If there's any issue there, we'll be able to resolve it or understand it or go back and fix it with the application providers as well. So we're committed 100%, not only just putting a piece of paper out there, 
but having the engineering fortitude behind it. Do you find it confusing with Project Synergy name, with Citrix being a partner? <laughs> I mean, don't they have a show called Synergy? <laughs> we used to go to, but I mean, why so, Synergy? Just, I mean, just. So it was really about the synchronization and pulling all the elements together, right? Yeah. Orchestration and, and, and pulling that together. So yeah, we're hopefully yeah. we don't have too much. You're not uh, in the event business, so there's no No, conflict. we're not in the event business, so. <laughs> there's no trademark uh, infringement on that one. Right, and it, this was really, it was, it was really started as an internal project, because as I mentioned, yeah. this just is not within the, the Converge Data Center Infrastructure Organization. It spans all of EG, HP software, so we really needed a project and a rallying call so that people see how their pieces of yeah. composability fit together. So that was the, that was the really So I, I, gotta, I gotta ask, how are you guys reconciling and rationalizing the partnership and or overlap with the cloud group? Because they're at OpenStack, they're doing DevOps, you know, they're talking the same kind of game, they're talking containers. You guys are a little bit different, obviously so, data center driven. Yeah. But where does that fit in? So, so the, the, the way we think about it is, we're serving up the infrastructure for OpenStack and the cloud guys to orchestrate. So, you know, people think about, well, just, you know, deploying a virtualization environment and all that is easy. Yeah, it's easy after somebody spends days, hours, weeks, getting all the infrastructure ready. Yeah. Verifying it for workloads. Verifying <laughs> it, building it, right? The biggest difference between yeah. converged systems, you had somebody actually physically build a converged system. Test it, validate it, verify it. With Composable, the software will handle that and serve up the infrastructure for the application at the right time. So we're teamed with uh, Bill Hill's organization on how the cloud system and the OpenStack will pull those resources and give the right resources. So the services must be a big part of it because you're essentially building, I won't say purpose-built or engineered systems, those words have been kicked around with other people, but like you are actually tailoring infrastructure composing infrastructure for essentially the cloud and DevOps, hybrid cloud, right? And, and private, whatever they want, but yep. um, I mean, that's got to be a big services piece. I mean, you know, is the TC guys, Johan and the, the other folks going, licking their chops here? I mean, is there a, some incubation going on with There's some the incubation going on, so uh, TS has a relationship with Chef that's tied in through the API and what we're doing, so we're starting there, very, you know, very slowly to start to help customers get on that you, train, you if that you will. We see that as a big part of this. We see that they as prime a, the pump, right? Yeah, prime the pump, critical phase to help customers understand, here's how this stuff works, here's how you can deploy it, and get a real use case out there that a customer can you know, see the value from. So the cloud group launched Cloud System 9, you're talking to Bill about that, and you're yep. hand in glove with these guys? Yep, we're, yeah, we're totally yeah. aligned with the, uh, that team. Yeah. Cloud System 9 under Converge Systems, integrating with OneView, 100% aligned. All right, so what's your take so far with the, with the announcement? I mean, how do you feel? What's some of the things that surprised you? Um, and what's, what's, what's going on? What's the vibe? So, so I, think, I think one of the things that surprised me is all of a sudden HP is becoming credible in having conversations around DevOps and building a platform of infrastructure that is now conversational with customers. That's, that's on, on that piece. When you start talking about what we're doing in the reference architecture side, everyone's, wow, HP, all I thought I had was an all HP stack to buy. Now all of a sudden you're opening the doors and you're giving me choice. I can have conversations. We'll always want you to you know, choose HP networking. We think it's our preferred solution. But there are customers who've made yeah, choices. Yeah, why foreclose that market? As workloads, yeah. as well as standards that customers have set and we're going to start to you know, really address those needs. So, true or false? Enterprises are re-architecting big time right now with cloud. True? I would say, or are, kicking the tires, or rolling it out, rolling are, out. They are test driving and doing some POCs. Uh, some customers, some customers are bleeding edge, but the majority are still trying to figure out what's that right strategy, what's that right balance between infrastructure in-house, hybrid, and how do I not get locked in? The biggest thing I hear from customers is, I don't want to put my data in my applications anywhere where I can't get them back out easily. Okay, as the VP of Marketing, give us the bumper sticker for the Converge data center with this capability. What should customers know about it? So, with Project Synergy, I think the bumper sticker is, it's infrastructure as code. You've always, you've always wanted to program your infrastructure, now we're enabling it. All right, Paul Miller, VP of Marketing of the Converge Systems Group, here inside theCUBE. 
breaking down project synergy, scalable workloads, verified workloads. Again, this is what's under the covers for all the application developers out there. This is the magic of DevOps, the service of DevOps. It's theCUBE, bringing, bringing you the signal. Join the conversation, go to hpdiscover.social. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>